I'm Jason Arts. I'm a product manager for the self-propelled forage harvesters for Midwest Ag here. I'm based out of Aberdeen, South Dakota. Uh, we're right now currently at our South Dakota pod field days, South of Aberdeen here. We've got a couple static displays going on today. Uh, we've got our 9900 self-propelled forage harvester. Uh, it's our largest model that deer puts out. Uh, it's running a 24 liter V12 LaBear engine in it. Uh, we're right around 970 horse, roughly in there, our peak torque. Uh, this machine running this model of engine in there, our full RPM, we're running at 1800 RPM. And when we run these in the field, we're pulling them down to our, our peak torque is around 1600 RPM. So we're running a lot lower RPM on these models of machines for uh, peak torque, better throughput, and less fuel, the better fuel economy. So on this machine, uh, right now this one's set up for grass alfalfa. We did a demo, so we do not have the kernel processor in place. The grass chute is in place on it, and we have an eight row spout on it. If we were to run a rotary head on there, 10 rows or bigger, we would be putting a 10 row spout or a 12 row folding spout extension on it. We take them off when we do pickup work. Our LaBear engine that we're running in this machine, um, we use air-induced DEF to help with our after-treatment system on it. It's two, pretty much like two inline six engines or cylinders sharing the same crank. So we have uh, two particular filters on it two turbos, there's two uh, controllers running the engine. We got the ECU and the DCU controller as a backup controller for both sides. This machine, we are running our DEF system on it for our after treatment system. This one's set up with uh, the rear wheel drive and 900 front tires. We have our main drive clutch that runs our cutter head. And we've got our header drive pump that runs our header and speeds, transfers that power down to our header drive gear case to run our header. We can run variable header speeds through the touch screen on the command center or 2630, whichever's in there. On our deer machines, we have what we call our Duraline cutter head, or um, we run a Chevron knife configuration. So we this machine set up with a 48 knife drum. We offer our 40 knife drum, a 48 knife drum, and a 56 knife drum. We have not seen any 56 knife drums in the U.S. They're mainly for European biomass. Um, this machine set up with grass knives and a um, Duraline shear bar. When I'm talking Duraline, that's all our hard surfacing, high wear parts that you can order with these machines. We've got three different configurations of Duraline packages. We can get our Duraline, our basic, we can get our premium, and our ultimate. And with our ultimate, you get an extra 1,500 hours or three-year warranty on any Duraline part if it were to wear out. If it was ingested with foreign material, then that voids the warranty. Um, on our feed roll cabinets, we run a radial arc uh, upper feed rolls. So our left-hand gear case with our feed roll dampener. This is kind of like our shock absorber. As crop comes through, the front feed roll will lift up and keep an equal pressure on the crop mat along with our upper rear feed roll. will keep a steady, consistent. Our feed roll cabinet, we run a radial arc system on our upper feed rolls, tensioned by our feed roll springs. So our front feed roll will float up and keep equal pressure on it and keep and our upper rear will float up to keep an even crop pressure on it 
for an even feeding into the cutter head. We can adjust our feed roll speed to adjust our length of cut on our crop. When we adjust our length of cut on our crop, the faster the feed rolls spin, the longer length the cut. The slower they turn, the shorter length the cut. And everything's based on product size. Back on our cutter head here, when we run our knives, we run four sets of knives to where our competitors, uh, they'll run a two row set of knives. Um, the reason for it, if we ingest a foreign material, ours, we have less surface area to impact and damage. Also, when we put our knives in, we're actually torquing the outside bolts to 219 and the center bolt to 179. That way, if we do ingest something, the knife will actually kick back and not kick out and hit our stationary knife. If we were to damage a knife beyond sharpening repair, we could actually replace this knife and the one 180 degrees on the back side, set them to our shear bar to where a competitor, if they were to have to replace a knife, they would have to replace the whole knife, move their sharpening stone all the way back up and sharpen that knife back down to the other knives that are on the cutter head so they could be there a good hour to read through them. Theirs is a set depth. We have a slot in each three slot groove on ours. We can adjust ours in and out. Along with our, our knife setup by staggering them like this and, and with four rows of them, we get a better uniform length of cut. So when we're talking a length of cut, that's the size of the crop. So each customer is different um, on what their length of cut they like on the pile. Um, anywhere from, you know, a lot of guys around here running 19 millimeters uniform length of cut on that. We can also set up an auto length of cut based on moisture through the command center or the display. We can set it up if the moistures are too high, then we can go a shorter length of cut. If the moistures are too low, then we can go a longer length of cut. With our knife configuration, beans were staggered. We get a better scissor action to our stationary knife to where if we, we were a competitor, we have one knife going all the way across, you've got a whole area that's contacting the stationary knife at once. So we're staggered and we're at an angle, so we get actually a scissor cut on it to keep that true uniform length of cut. On the front end here, we've got our upper and our lower feed roll. Like I was explaining, your upper front feed roll will float with a crop mat. We actually have plastic uh, diverters in there to fill in the gap. If we have some tough feeding, we can actually remove them to get more aggressive. There's bolt-on replaceable strips on them. Same with the bottom feed roll. There's bolt-on replaceable strips. Also, we're running the heavy-duty lower front feed roll. Deer just released that here a year ago. It's been really robust against uh, when you're doing uh, pickup work with alfalfa. Uh, picking up rocks, ingesting. Like I said, this machine was demoed last week, so we were in alfalfa, so we actually have the stone guard in place. When we go to whole crop, we actually take that stone guard out and we put our green pan in. The stone guard actually helps keep larger rocks from falling down between the pickup head and the feed roll and getting caught in there and damaging our feed roll. They actually will help bounce them back out. In our lower front feed roll, we also, with this machine, we have a, our magnet, which will pick up any metal that'll be coming into contact with it. It'll stop the feed rolls and the header in a split second. Also, as an option with these machines, when we ordered it, we also have stone detection. So there's two sensors, one in the lower front feed roll and one in the upper radius arm of the upper feed roll. The, what they'll do is they'll sense sudden impact of a rock or a sudden movement up of the feed roll and when I explain to people what they are they're kind of like earthquake sensors when they feel something they'll stop them feed rolls in the header instantly they will not stop the propulsion of the forward movement of the machine 
So here we have our small drum head. This is actually a 690 head. This is our, our 10 row small drum head. Um, we run a 692, which is a 12 row head. There's a 698, which is an eight row head. And a 696 is a, a six row small drum on our small drum configuration. We also offer a large drum package. Um, we also, they're offered in a 772, which is a 12 row small drum. 770, which is our 10 row big drum. A 778 is our big drum, eight row. And a 678 is still our, or 676 is our big drum, uh, six row head. With our small drum heads, we have mechanical brakes in them. With our large drum heads, we have electronic brakes. So each gear case will have electronic solenoid to release the brakes. With our big drum head, there's such a centrifugal force of that big drum. If we ingest something, that'll trip and stop them knives instantaneous. These are mechanical, like a radial piston clutch in these to stop them. Um, when people ask me about what's the difference between a small drum and a big drum head, why we run them, where we run them, um, in our area here that I support, we're mainly small drum heads. We have corn anywhere from 3 to 20 ton corn throughout the whole field so that it's inconsistent crop height. We've been able to get these small drum heads to feed that inconsistency better than a large drum. Now we got different areas just to the east of me and west of me. They're all mainly big drums. So they're they're running in larger ton corn, more consistent plant size. So when everybody asks me what what I would, would say the difference is, it says big drums are for big tons, small drums are for small tons. I'm Jason Arts, product manager for the self pub forage harvesters for Midwest Ag. If there's any questions you have about the self-propelled forage harvesters, please contact me at the Aberdeen location. Thank you for watching. Connect with us by subscribing to Precision Ag Answers on YouTube and following RDO Equipment Company on social media. Visit rdoequipment.com for more Precision Ag resources and solutions.